Welcome, ladies and germs. No, no, no. There's copying few, and then there's that. Amateurs. Today we're going to be getting too spooky for you. <laughs> and take a look at Revenge of the Fallen Mind Wipe. So, uh... Mind Wipe. What, what, what was I saying? Yes, it's time to take a non-HD, I'm afraid, look at this fearsome creature of the night and overlord of shadows and little voices that go whispering in your ear. Of course, he's from the lovely, wonderful Nest subline back end Revenge of the Fallen that was just totally the best thing ever and just provided us with some truly stonking figures. This being one of them, but sadly, he didn't arrive to UK shores, so I had to buy him inexpensively from eBay. Who gives him monkeys about now? If you're really bothered and you want this mould cheap, then try and track down. Reveal the shield strafe. But he's nowhere near as dark or brooding and menacing as this thing. So yes, he's a beautiful sort of stealth bomber with a lovely sort of ectoplasmic sheen of shininess all over him. Yes, and the blood-red cockpit. Stained with the entrails of many a dead pilot, I would imagine. And he's got these sort of cyberglyphics on his wings. Perhaps they mean, I kill you, or I will dismember you brutally, or none of your thoughts are safe, or mm, go get some pizza from Samo. Opening hours, 10 to 5. He does bear a very nice Decepticon sort of Air Force insignia that you will see carried through other Jet Mode, Revenge of the Fallen and HFTD figures, which is very nice. It makes a little sort of grouping of all of those wonderfully maligned creatures of the sky and, I don't know, it's a sort of movie seekerish sort of type of thing, maybe. He's got these two ports on the top here, but uh, we won't talk about that. Needless to say, if you've got a Skystalker instead of a... Uh, flying fried egg here, then it will look a hell of a lot better. Overall, he's a mighty tidy sort of chevron, as I've seen him described a few times. Yes, your eyes may trick you though, because he isn't actually black. He's a very dark green, and it's really hard to sort of see that in anything but looking at the thing in real life, because every single picture I ever saw this, every single video I ever saw this, I thought it was black and I bought it and thought, is there something wrong with mine because it's green? It's got some nice rolling landing gear on the bottom and some robot guts, which we won't look at too closely. So overall, it's a lovely, sleek, smooth, absolutely no kibble, stealthy jet that's just up there, circling around the stratosphere, whooshing and diving through dark clouds and listening in to your every secret innermost thought. Just like the NSA! Hi, Barack! I suppose that's all there is to talk about in this mode, so... Let's transform it, shall we? Time for some transmogrification. What you're going to want to do is take your jet as such, untab some corner bits down here so you get these wings free, pull at the sides and you get some legs. Take these pointy bits and they make feet and you can chickenify it up as much as or as little as you like. I'll just leave it like that for now. Take the cockpit and yank it up, and then you can split it in half. Take the tail fin section and put those together, put those up, and just sort of rotate the whole thing backwards. It may help to push open this spring load a bit so you can get his head in and get the head reveal. Sort out this red bit behind his neck and you can get his head moving around properly. Next you can yank the wing sort of stumps out and they make shoulders. Here would be a good point to rotate at the waist and sort these legs out. You can then fold in the wings, doing the lovely automorph red things, poke out while stuff curls up, doodad motion. Then take the forearms and sort of detach the red bits so that they fling out and you want to move the hands around sort of downwards as far as they go, otherwise these bits which will become swords do not tab in. And you're finished! A truly grisly transformation worthy of any vampire or werewolf. So yes, Mind Wipe's robot mode here. It's suitably ghoulish and evil looking. I think you'll agree. He stands nice and tall. He's a nice big Voyager figure. He's certainly got some sort of chunk to him. And for a movie guy, he hasn't really got a lot of intricacy to him. For a while, this will put me off the figure, I have to say, because he just doesn't feel like a movie toy. He feels too simple to transform and all of the pieces are really big. And he's got big joints and click and... Yes, he's got these sort of 
lacklustre shivs that come down and are meant to be all spring loaded like watching but it's nothing like that it's just sort of like a bit disappointing but they are wonderfully serrated and suitably blood stained and quite hard to get back in sometimes so how can this guy move well you saw he's got a waist swivel from transformation which is pretty nice got some click in the hips up and down and then they go out and then there's a swivel and he's got a nice knee which can go sort of double and then you can get the sort of chicken leg ankle going and there's a bit of tilt there which isn't bad and of course the feet will move up and down and he's got sort of double elbows but they won't move double because there's all this sort of stuff in the way nothing from then on though because of the whole knife mechanism his shoulders move pretty well and of course you can get these bits flicking out of the way up and down and round and round and all of this and then of course his noggin which is on a lovely ball joint and then it's on a sort of up and down joint too so you can get that posing in every direction and looking as sinister and brooding and contemplative of your demise as you wish oh yeah and he's got this weird sort of flap in his chest I don't know what that's for. I've seen some people force Sky Stalkers into there as a sort of robot mode combination, but I'm pretty sure you're not meant to do that. I guess it's just something fun, roboty, and maybe it does call back to the old Headmaster flip open chest thing. I don't really know. But once it is open, you'll see there's a dark cavity within. No heart, no soul. His colours are pretty good overall. He's all sort of this green, and then you've got a sort of very light green, it's almost beige here and there, and the red inside his torso and underneath all of this metal as if it were some sort of sanguine gut sack or glowing lavery sort of burning power. And that sort of exhumes through these vents as well. And his eyes, this ruby red visor. <laughs> completely captivating you and hypnotizing you and exerting every ounce of mental power over your will so that you succumb and become a mindless sunk of slave. Because that's really what Mindwipe is all about. Exerting his will over yours, creating a horde of minions and followers that he can direct to their doom without getting his fingers dirty. He'll be there, brute force hacking his way into your mind and planting all these little seeds and thoughts and ideas, stripping you of your every single trait of identity and whispering, whispering, ever whispering, the voices never stopping, telling you to kill and burn, pillage and destroy, distorting your very perception of reality until you crack and nothing of you is left, nothing at all, get to black, no, not even black, a grey, shapeless form, a husk of a mind, and you'll be his until the end of time. Pretty sinister stuff. Perhaps you best not look him straight in the eye. Oh no, it's got me. So mind wiped then. A thoroughly Halloween worthy, spooktacular robot of darkness and night. And the blackness within your very soul. He represents the very evil of loss of self control. Just consider the havoc and desolation that could be wrought upon the land if you only got control of you. He could make you open a packet of crisps from the bottom. Oh, the ungodly horror. Till next time, dear YouTube. Don't have nightmares. <laughs> I'm a funky skeleton, skeleton of funk. I'm gonna bring all that funk, all that funk to your trunk.